The Clean Power Hour is brought to you by CPS America, the maker of North America's number one three-phase string inverter, with over six gigawatts shipped in the U.S. The CPS America product lineup includes three-phase string inverters ranging from 25 to 275 kW. Their flagship inverter, the CPS 250-275, is designed to work with solar plants ranging from 2 megawatts to 2 gigawatts. The 250-275 pairs well with CPS America's exceptional data communication, controls, and energy storage solutions. Go to chinpowersystems.com to find out more. I think you'll see that Amanda, my guest today, Amanda Lee, the COO of Bandit Infrastructure, is just so enthusiastic for what she's about, disrupting project finance in the clean energy transition. It's very infectious, and she's clearly a super capable, successful uh, employee number three at Generate Capital. My goodness, like what a track record. But she's been building Banyan for five years. They closed on a Series B round of funding in 2023. So they're off to the races. They have 50 employees now. They're scaling and they're getting traction. And, you know, our mission here at the Clean Power Hour is to speed the energy transition. And I truly believe that platforms like Banyan are doing just that. They are making it easier to get stuff deployed to decarbonize the economy. That's the bottom dollar here. So with that, I give you Amanda Lee. Are you speeding the energy transition? Here at the Clean Power Hour, our hosts Tim Montague and John Weaver bring you the best in solar, batteries, and clean technologies every week. Want to go deeper into decarbonization? We do too. We're here to help you understand and command the commercial, residential, and utility solar, wind, and storage industries. So let's get to it. Together we can speed the energy transition. Today on the Clean Power Hour, easing project finance for the clean energy transition. You know, the energy transition is a $100 trillion opportunity, but we need to deploy, 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 as Jigger Shaw likes to say. My guest today is Amanda Lee. She is the COO and co-founder of a company called Banyan Infrastructure, and they are deploying a platform to make it a lot easier to scale finance in the clean energy transition. So welcome to the show, Amanda. Thank you. Great to be here. You also happen to have worked for Jiggershy. I understand you were an early employee at Generate Capital. And at some point during the interview, I would love to hear a little bit about that. But give our listeners a little background on yourself. How did you get interested in the energy transition at all? And then how did you come to co-found Banyan? Uh, Well, yeah, I think I've been at it for a bit now, uh, you know, where... You know, there wasn't an aha moment. I decided I wanted to come to climate. Wanted it since, you know, school and was involved since the clean tech 1.0 days. First jobs out of school was in solar and fuel cells. But then realized uh, I was an engineer by training. Realized was not uh, long for getting a PhD and inventing something. Um, Probably not smart enough as well. Uh, But was, uh, you know, very uh, excited to learn that, you know, a lot of the transition could be benefited not just by invention, but to to your point, Tim, by deployment, right? Deploy, deploy, deploy. Um, And I could help out over there. And so went from being an engineer uh, in in, um, the clean tech space to figuring out how I can help out on the business side of things. Um, And so after uh, securing this route through other startups, consulting, um, landed at Generate Capital. and was the first employee there. And so it was just Scott, Jigger, and myself back when Generate was only $100 million, not the $8 billion machine it is today. Um, and so don't have to go into it quite yet, but had a lot of lessons there. But the, the short of it is, is basically came out of it knowing when there needs to be a tool and eventually building a tool that I wish I had. And, and that is Banyan. Yeah. Well, I mean... It, it, it the background having been at generate is so perfect for what you're doing at Banyan. I, I mean, the, I don't, I can't imagine a more perfect background actually. So thank you for doing what you're doing. And for those of you who don't know, tell us a little bit about generate because Jigger is a, is pretty much a household name in the solar industry because of Sun Edison, but 
people know less, I think, about Generate. And of course, now he's the head of the loan program office at the DOE. But tell us about Generate and then we'll get into Banyan. Yeah, Generate um, is a, um, a PBC that's looking to invest and own and operate the various types of technologies that we will need in this energy transition. So think of it as um, the, the capital um, and the operations for not just solar and, and wind and energy efficiency, um, but anything that is sustainable infrastructure, including transportation, water systems, ag, um, if it can be project finance, if it's if it an infrastructure asset helping that transition, it's something that generates looking at uh, and is looking to try to figure out how to deploy capital to those assets or those platforms so they, they can go then build. Um, these were the models that, that Jigger brought in uh, and the rest of the team that was to say that, hey, in this transition, if we can make it faster and cheaper uh, to invest in these assets, then we will uh, be able to meet our goals, right? And and you know, financing as a tool, capital markets as a tool is an incredibly powerful one. Um, and you know, there's going to be trillions of dollars needed for that, and, and generate is one of those uh, parties of trillions of dollars. And generate, you know, is mission driven, right? They are focused on sustainable technologies that wheel turn, so to speak, right? Technologies mature. And I just heard through the grapevine that, for example, Generate isn't that interested in solar PV anymore because that's kind of old hat. And they're moving into more emerging tech like, you know, hydrogen or other long duration storage technologies. And I don't know, you know, when you think about sustainability writ large, if there are certain segments that you get more excited about than others? No, I, I'm excited across the entire spectrum, right? We'll need everything. I mean, at the end of the day, like solar, while solar is mature in some ways compared to newer technologies, it's still very small and nascent compared to larger, more mature in- industries like the oil and gas industry, right? And, right. and broader, uh, more traditional infrastructures. And so everything, like, we still need plenty of more solar, plenty more wind, uh, but we'll also need to have uh, those uh, investors and companies chasing the the earlier stage um, uh, technology as well and helping them scale uh, and be able to find fit, right? And so if we think around more energy storage, um, you know, these nature-based solutions and carbon capture, uh, a lot to be said around the pros and cons of hydrogen, sustainable aviation fuel, a lot of interesting new segments uh, coming up. Um, and all of it will be important if we want to tackle this problem. And But what's really convenient is that all of it can be financed in a very similar format, right? At the end of the day, uh, whether you're generating your electricity from um, solar, right, and, and you know tracking the performance of its cash flows and, and the underlying performance of the asset, whether it's generating the energy that you expected to, or you're using a, a newer technology, right? So you've got some sort of uh, modular nuclear reactor, right? At the end of the day, you're still trying to track its cash flows and tracking whether it's performed, right? Um, and so how can we bring the learnings from these more mature industries to the new ones? That's what interests me. All of it should look really similar. And the more all of it looks like similar energy assets, efficiency assets, right, transportation assets, the easier it will be to finance them because we, we're creating a shared language. Yeah. And and so when when we think about the energy transition, we think about a lot of solar wind and batteries for, you know, just to name three technologies, right? The grid is eventually going to be uh, probably 90% wind and solar. That includes utility scale, uh, community scale, DG, and residential, the full spectrum. And those industries are being financed today. So how is it that the advent of Banyan is going to facilitate or accelerate the financing of the energy transition? Uh, well, even in those industries, right, we can afford to be cheaper and go faster and find more liquidity, right? And so if we target each of those, right, the amount of overhead in each of these deals still has a lot of room to go down, right? I, I you know, a large number of your guests say this across the capital stack, right? But as a top, one of the many software providers in the solar and wind energy world, the goal is how can we make it more accessible, cheaper overall, and cap and in capital markets, that is a large portion of cost as well, right? We've tar- talked to large project finance banks 
where they have a half a million to a million dollar cost just to close a transaction, right? Paying out to lawyers and brokers. You know, if you have a half a million dollar cost there to just close the transaction, you're not going to be looking at a $5 million deal or a $10 million deal. It's just way too expensive. And so how can we make it cheaper by reducing the amount of work that needs to go into it, finding ways to automate certain of the workflow, both upfront and ongoing, right? Because guess what? After the transaction is done, we're going to need to have a, a group of people to manage the risk and to be able to manage um, the ongoing uh, compliance of the asset. And you, you, there's not enough people, even if you want to hire them, to have an army of analysts. And even if there was, they probably wouldn't want the job called stare at numbers for you know and spreadsheets all day long to just scrub it and figure out what's going on, right? They want to analyze it, not gather that data. So that's on cost. Then we have an entire bucket around speed, right? Which is that it needs to be faster, right? Faster to understand what we're investing in, faster to make that decision, faster to bundle it up and trade it, right? Efficient capital markets, right? We think around our colleagues in the real estate markets, right? Incredibly standardized in some areas, incredibly liquid because everyone's talking the same language. We can make an investment decision much quicker and then be able to bundle it and trade it to somebody else because we understand what we're talking about. You know, we see some of these, even in the solar and wind space, transactions are taking months at a time to deploy and there is time to move that down, right? Especially as you're looking at smaller scale investments, right? If you are doing community solar, Right? How can we bring that into a matter of weeks rather than a matter of months to make that transaction? Yeah. Uh, and then finally, liquidity, right? When you bundle those people in. And so, you know, the way is to roll up 100 small community projects means that we have to make them look similar. And that's a great thing that software can do. Some of these larger banks, even if you're decreased all of your overhead, they're not looking to make $5 million checks, right? They're looking to do $100 million at a time. How do we make it easier for those who are writing $5 million checks to get that back leverage by taking a number of $5 million projects and, and selling it upwards. And so, so, so money, speed and liquidity. So let's paint, uh, let's paint a, a picture before Banyan, after Banyan. Before Banyan, there's a lot of geeks using spreadsheets and crunching numbers and it's time consuming and there's friction and it's bespoke projects and there's not a common language. After Banyan, everything is more standardized and somewhat automated. But what do you estimate is the uh, the factor, the, the X factor? Is this a five X, uh, you know, accelerant, or how, how do you how do you sell the value proposition? Yeah, we like to say we're getting anywhere between two to ten X some of those transaction speeds, and so that's what we're trying to lower it down from, depending on how far you're leaning into some of the the uh, the transaction flows and how efficient it was before. Uh, on an operational perspective of the overhead we're reducing is, you know, looking upwards of 150 bips on the transaction. And so anyone who's looking for the extra margin in the deal, that's a lot of margin to find, right? And mm -hmm. part of it's from seeing from our customers, but frankly, we're following a very well-trodden roadmap. We see that when fintech has come into other financial services industries and there are fintech products for auto loans and again, commercial real estate and, um, you know, SMB lending products, right? Finding anywhere from 100 to 200 BIPs is not uncommon. And that just makes a lot of deals more in the red, right? And where is it coming from? Yes, it is coming from a lot of this blocking and tackling, right? It's, you know, you're, you're not paying a lawyer $1,000 an hour to manage a closing checklist in a Word document. You're not hiring 10 analysts to do a job that, you know, half the number of analysts could be doing to report on portfolio level IRR. Uh, you're not you're not baking in liquidity premiums uh, and huge DSCRs because you have better insight into your your risk and your overhead uh, and better ability to trade. So, paint us more of a picture though of the platform and what does it consist of? Are you leveraging, for example, machine learning? Does the does the model get smarter as it goes and faster and better? Um, or yeah, tell us about the, about the platform and who are your core customers? Yeah, I think at the moment it's, um, a lot of crawl before we, we run, um, in, in the project finance industry today, right? If we think around all these exciting things around AI, machine learning, you know, and a few years ago it was all about blockchain, right? None of these technologies are possible if you don't first have a good consistent set of data, right? Um, to train off of to analyze, 
to create, um, you know, clear audit trails of, of what you're feeding in, right? Bad data in is bad data out. And so we can't even go there yet, right? I know everyone else is, you know, where I sit in Silicon Valley here is talking about AI. We're talking to some project financiers that are managing their deal flow on their, you know, desktop on, on, on you know, OneNote or a piece of paper, right? Uh, we're talking about managing your portfolio um, outcomes on a spreadsheet that's offline. And when you're checking a reserve account to log into a bank account and stare a number and PDF that view to ensure you're in compliance, right? These are things that other part in industries have figured out 20 years back in the first wave of digital technology adoption. That's where we're starting up with our platform, basic workflow automation, basic data aggregation, and then working to basic analytics. What that looks like is, hey, if you are a developer and, and a fund who are collaborating, right, how do we make it so that as you're submitting documents and details, looking for uh, approvals, it's happening online rather than sending a spreadsheet back and forth, asking you what the address of the site is. You know, once the address is in there, you're not typing it seven different times or the analyst isn't taking it from the spreadsheet and inputting it somewhere else. It's already in the system and can be used to help you understand your exposure per geography. Um, once you're closing, you understand the full audit trail, you understand the compliance, would love to chat through all of that because there's a lot of compliance coming up with the IRA. Um, and, and then once it's closed, you really have a streamlined risk and, and portfolio management tool that can let you know portfolio level views of what's going on, IRR, cash flows, your carbon equivalent offsets if you care about the impact metrics at the portfolio level, mm -hmm. and then be able to drill down into sub portfolios individual deals, individual assets, and say, hey, what's going on here, right? I have a trigger alert, something's going wrong. Looks like it was this asset that has lower revenues and it was because I had lower performance. And so what I described all there, Tim, to, your, to answer your question is basic work, mid and back office automation, analytic software, in some ways, not really sexy. We hope to get the entire industry towards AI. This is the data you can use to train an AI model. Um, but we'd be thrilled if people just got off of, uh, you know, you know, offline systems. So I understand it that, you know, certainly asset owners and financiers will want to use this. Are there other groups that are potential customers for Banyan? Yeah, we're starting to see a lot of developers, um, you know, come onto the platform as well. There is already a module where the funds invite the developers in so they can collaborate on the transaction and share deal details. But we're seeing some developers also be interested in having those tools for themselves. We're really excited that earlier that any developer thinks about bankability, the better, right? You want to not wait till the last moment to realize that something was an issue for a bank or a financier. Um, or isn't eligible for a certain tax credit. So the earlier there is sort of an understanding of what's needed, the healthier it is for the project. And oftentimes those those steps aren't done because it's overhead, right? And the deal's sort of immature still, so why do it early? Well, if it's easy to do early, that is an interesting segment. Um, but frankly, it's, it's really the the owner operators, the funds that are are mainly the 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 core buyers of the asset. Uh, we have anywhere from like really big banks like SNBC to specialty funds like New York Green Bank um, to IPPs, uh, owner operators um, like Standard Solar. The Clean Power Hour is brought to you by CPS America, the maker of North America's number one three-phase string inverter with over six gigawatts shipped in the U.S. The CPS America product lineup includes three-phase string inverters ranging from 25 to 275 kW. Their flagship inverter, the CPS 250-275, is designed to work with solar plants ranging from 2 megawatts to 2 gigawatts. The 250-275 pairs well with CPS America's exceptional data communication, controls, and energy storage solutions. Go to chintpowersystems.com to find out more. Yeah, makes sense. So you mentioned, uh, you, you mentioned the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, What's what's the story? I mean, we talk a lot about the Inflation Reduction Act on the show here. Of course, it's a it's a huge boon for the clean energy transition, unlike anything we've seen in the in the United States or frankly globally before. And, and it's and it's a very good thing. It's not that there aren't some headwinds. You know, in inflation has has been a problem for especially DG Solar this year, right? DG Solar is down and uh, kind of taking it on the chin. 
it'll bounce back. Things ebb and flow in 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 the energy transition. We call it the solar coaster, and it's uh, it's just it's just part of the ride. Like it's it's to be expected, but but frankly, it's game on, right? Like we are now installing gigawatts and gigawatts of wind and solar and batteries, and um, and truly chasing after a carbon free economy. I like to say, Amanda, you know. That's the easy part. The 40 gigatons of carbon that we have to get out of the economy is child's play relative to the 1,000 gigatons that's already in the atmosphere and also needs to be decarbonized. And, and I don't know if you have any uh, magic bullets for that, but if you do, let us know. No, no, I think, well, a number of things to discuss there. One, no magic bullet, which I had one of those. I do think a lot of the IRAs... Um, uh, benefits around bringing in some of the newer technologies um, being so that the ITC and the PC, TCC open up beyond sort of your traditional solar and wind, uh, that there are specific credits to some of these new technologies that will help with these larger problems. Uh, that's really beneficial. Uh, but broadly, I think the the conversation we we often have within Banyan here is that, well, yeah, let's celebrate the IRA. You know, heard a number of, of your podcasts here that are uh, describing the impact and the, the possibilities. Uh, but here it's like, hey, what are the, you know, what are the ways that it, this is actually adding a lot of overhead and how can we really help here, right? We're finally, um, you know, over a year in and we're hopefully, we're hopefully getting more tactical about the implementation of the IRA. Uh, we know there's a lot of uh, rulings still being clarified, but, uh, you know, it feels like at the very beginning, it was like, hurrah, right? Like free money. Um, but to really get the full scale of benefits, um, it is more compliance, right? It is chasing more of the DG deals that are, are, are struggling a little bit, but that's where they're the highest number of benefits. It will be tackling all the problems I discussed earlier, which is that smaller scale projects in higher volumes need to be done quickly, need to be done with less overhead, uh, need to be now done with more compliance because each one of these adders has a ton of rules around it. And all of that without increasing risk or having some sort of audit trail that won't sniff up to the IRS, right? Um, and that's a huge place that we could play, where it's like, how do you make it, again, faster, or easier to do the audit, to do the compliance, uh, to make the decisions for these small-scale assets to reap the full benefits uh, of the IRA, both for small-scale projects and larger-scale projects and new technologies. Yeah, I I uh, I don't know what I don't know, and and I'm and I'm kind of happy I don't know all those things. Um, it sounds a little intimidating, but but I get it. Like we need to make project finance easier. Bottom bottom line, right? Easier, faster, and more standardized. You know how do how do you guys see how does Banyan see the the impact of the IRA? I think it's uh, you know so. Overall impact, you know, that probably many more economists can talk through the, the bigger numbers. Um, but we're talking about, I think, how in terms of the impact that we can drive there, it's that there there is those complexities, right? To your point, Tim, right? If You know, there are a lot of people saying we don't know what we don't know, right? We're going to have to um, uh, to take the advantage of the benefits, be able to comply to a, a larger number of rules, uh, be able to to take advantage of certain areas of these um, of adders um, and everyone's sort of figuring out right now, right? And, and be de facto, what might happen is that you could pay an advisor or a lawyer many fees or a consultant to be able to help you out there. But those are dollars that could be going towards projects or making certain deals more bankable. And so whereas we can't speak as well about the total possible impact, right? Um, what we can say is we will never achieve whichever is the total possible impact without the ability to say, hey, make it easier so that, you know, you know, experts like yourselves aren't saying, hey, we don't know all these complexities, right? Everyone's going to have to understand it if we want to get those benefits, right? And so it should be, hey, how can you have a clear checklist that tells you whether you satisfy wage and apprenticeship requirements, domestic content, right? Whether you're in a disadvantaged community and do that as early as possible, both for the developer to have confidence that they will qualify but also as a financier to be able to quickly um, understand that that the the project has juice. This also has an extra complexity, um, and stop even getting too much in the weeds here. 
Um, but that there are new players coming out also on the financier side, right? Uh, there's the GGRF, Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund, which is $27 billion. That's funding more community lenders and community and green banks, uh, some which are are new to building out these community solar programs or EV charging programs. Mm. Now, so not only are there developers figuring out what they need to submit, there are new banks and funds that are trying to figure out what they're trying to collect. And all of that can potentially be helped out by having a common language and standards uh, around how this is done and what is best practice. Uh, and those are features that we're, we're rolling out as fast as we can and taking advantage of a lot of our, our prior compliance features. So when you think about the world before 2018, when you launched Banyan uh, and, and the world today that has Banyan, who are you putting out of business? Is it is it the is it the accounting firms and the and the attorneys who are you're you're squeezing out, or who exactly is pie are you eating? Oh, uh, I, I think at the end of the day, the industry should be hopefully right. If we we all you know, otherwise there are bigger climate problems growing at a rate where there aren't enough bodies to keep up with some of this work that needs to be done, right? And, and what you see instead is people slow down or don't make the investments that they could, right? People are are not investing in these smaller projects um, or making investments at a certain rate that supports the size of their portfolio management team or the size of their investment team. And so I think the jobs that we are replacing in some ways are the jobs that like were being struggled to fit to 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 fill right we see this and you you know this oh much shortage right and people that have decades of solar financing experience there's not many of them right a decade ago it was a very nascent industry and now we're demanding that hundreds if not thousands of financiers have this ability uh and so we're creating leverage for a group of people that that need it without having to place jobs which is very convenient right it's always better to be able to apply software and say now you can grow 2x without having to hire the roles that you were struggling to fill uh rather than saying you need to fire anybody right um if it was anyone it's something that we are very happy to replace which is that we saw a lot of bespoke build you know, funds spending anywhere from one to ten million dollars in bespoke software build in house because it was so difficult to be making these investments. People started to hire engineers to be building effectively Banyan. And if you can imagine every single fund and bank building their own platform, that's a terrible use of money, right? And you know, a lot of funds aren't great product developers. Um, and so we're happy to be like, hey, a centralized system makes a lot more sense from a cost perspective and from a compatibility perspective. Definitely. So let's say I'm a DG financier. I finance community solar and I'm used to doing, you know, tranches of say 50 or hundred million dollars. What is the, what is the process like to onboard a platform like Banyan? How long does that take? And when, how quickly can I expect to see some improvement in my workflow operation? Yeah, I think we have we have multiple modules across origination, sort of reporting compliance and, and portfolio management. We'd like to say, like from our origination standpoint, you know, we can we can start to count that in weeks rather than months, uh, the higher number of weeks. Um, but allowing for you to start to understand your checklist and your templates. Um, same on the reporting compliance side, we can take all of your existing obligations and sort of turn them into a digital instrument in some ways to understand what's due and when and when you need to submit things to your lender or your financier. That's all incredibly quick. Um, and we love to be able to say, hey, your, your you know, financiers are busy enough, right? And I was mentioning that job shortage. Everyone's working 100 plus hour weeks. Um, and so we want to make sure we come in and really provide that value very quickly. Um, the stuff that takes a, bit, a little bit longer is some of that portfolio management, um, where you're trying to, you know, you want to get that portfolio level IRR or, or you know, or MYC, those numbers. We need to tie into either accounting systems or bank accounts uh, and ensure that your forecasts on your spreadsheets all tie up correctly to be able to roll it up. And, and that can take a little bit of time. And what we then encourage is that if you're a fund that's starting out or still small and growing, is that to, to answer these questions earlier. It is so much harder to try to implement software when you have a spaghetti of, of systems already, you have hundreds of spreadsheets that 
you know, don't match up and aren't standardized. You have four different folder structures. We come in and we have to help you clean it up before we can impl implement the software. But if you're just starting now, you're just building a fund, and, and that's many of them now, right? That's exciting to build software from day one. And we're so heartened at this new generation of fund managers who are starting to think digital first uh, because they don't want to get to a place where a few years down the line, it's a giant mess and Banyan's coming in to clean up a mess rather than preemptively prevent one. You've been in business for five years now. Tell us a little bit about that journey. How's it going? What's the reception you're getting from the market? And what is it that you need more of? Um, so early days was, you know, the first few years was all about trying to figure out, was, was this going to really be a thing, right? You know, I was like, I could go back to Generate or McKinsey and to take to take a leap and be a startup founder. Um, you know, some people might call that a little crazy. Um, but, you know, every single fund and bank and developer we chatted with were like, how are you currently doing this? Oh, it's in Excel. Do you like that? Does that work for you? No. Wow. That's like 10 out of 10 times every single time. It was this broken system. And so that early days of really talking to hundreds of banks and funds and, and hearing and clear demand, that was with the early days of Banyan um, and really establishing that this is incredibly necessary, uh, incredibly impactful with those early customers. Uh, and today now we're, we're at a series B, we have 50 plus people and, and it's all about scale. Um, we're extremely excited to be on, on podcasts like yourselves because we're trying to spread the gospel, right? Um, projects finance software was not a, a industry before, right? The, you know, it's not something that um, some funds even know of, right? Excel is all they've known. They've been doing it that way for decades. Uh, we're really about educating right now the industry and then quickly ensuring more adoption. Uh, and once that starts to happen, we should really hopefully see a snowball effect where a couple of years from now, uh, ideally it becomes preposterous to be starting a fund or, you know, being a fund entering the solar space and not having software. The same way if you were starting a small business today and you were doing your accounting in a spreadsheet, people would look at you being like, why are you doing that? Why aren't you buying QuickBooks or NetSuite, right? There's software to help you with that, right? Don't use a spreadsheet. Uh, we need to get project finance to, to that area. And, you know, it's about slowly getting people to understand that there's a better option uh, and then slowly developing that that is the standard option. And to do spreadsheets would be archaic. And what's a reasonable expectation for a successful outcome? Some percent, like what, what do you think about what does success look like in, in five or 10 years? I think it is being the standard there, right? I, I The industry needs a standard. You know, it's, it, it could be fine if there's one or two of them, but there needs to be systems that talk to each other. Uh, and a vision we see is that a developer is able to communicate to its financiers early in the life cycle what its asset is and understand um, whether it is bankable uh, on Banyan, be able to, the fund is using that to help manage its transaction. It's then using it during operations. And then the fund is then going to a bank to understand whether it can get back leverage. That bank is bundling a number of those loans to a pension fund to, you know, to sell it off on the back end there. The entire life cycle is managed on the system because it all sends, speaks the same language and it's incredibly fast and liquid and understandable, right? Any sort of fund and bank not in solar today can easily be like, yeah, I can enter in this industry because there's a way of understanding risk that's clear um, and I can add in my systems uh, and be able to, to look at key projects really easily without having decades of relationships with a certain developer and a trust-based way of making that investment. Um, and so in five years, it's, you know, if it's, it's not us, I genuinely wish for, for somebody else to be there, right? They're, this industry needs that standard. And if we are that, that would be our wildest dreams, both from a you know, financial impact of our own company, but also the climate impact we can make. Uh, because that means that's an effective capital market. Does the does the scale of the platform today give you a, a a purview into what is going on in the energy transition? Do you see how certain technologies are ebbing and flowing? Uh, we are starting to. Um, we have had um, funds and banks ask us, "Can we buy your data?" Because you know, there's EV investments on them. There's mm -hmm. waste investments, right? They want they want to see how those are doing and having those norms. We hope to be able to have more data products. Um, as we scale, um, but we'll need a bit more volume on our platform we can do, before we can do that, right? We really want to make sure we can anonymize it, 
And if you, you know you have only a certain number of um, industrial waste projects on your platform and you start to look at drill down it by geography, it, it quickly becomes unanonymized, right? Um, and so hopefully we can get more people on and we'll soon have a data set that we can use to share to the industry to help encourage people's understanding of, of what is low and high risk. Um, and and also hopefully to train, you know, to your earlier point, these the next generation of technology, right? We can train an AI algorithm and, and start to get more than basic analytics. We can have not only IRR of what is today, but potentially projected IRR of the projects based on past historical performance. Well, in our last few minutes together, Amanda, what else should our listeners know about Banyan infrastructure? I'm, fa- I'm fascinated, uh, you know, to see how this becomes a standard and I wish you all the success. Please check out all of our content at cleanpowerhour.com. Give us a rating and a review on Apple and Spotify and check out our YouTube channel. Please hit that bell, subscribe to the YouTube and reach out to me. I love hearing from my listeners, uh, your ideas for subjects we should cover and guests that we should have, but tell us what else should our listeners know, Amanda, and how can our listeners find you? Um, perfect. Well, feel free to reach out, um, you know, both on our website, www.banyaninfrastructure.com, um, or, or to me, Amanda at banyaninfrastructure.com. I hope I don't regret giving out that email there. <laughs> um, but, um, I think I, I, the reason why I gave it out is because of the, uh, parting note, uh, to the share to everyone here is that collaboration is super key here to make this transition. Um, we'll need everyone at the table really trying to share insights on what are what should be the standards, right? What are the ways that we can accelerate decision making and assessing risk, both for you know technologies like solar still that still don't have quite a standard, and even more so new technologies that are rising up. Um, and you know we don't want to be making that standard in isolation, right? It's going to take everyone coming together. Uh, so we we encourage that that conversation and would love to chat with anyone who is equally excited at trying to figure out that out. Uh, and I, I promise won't try to sell you the platform too hard, even if you just want to just come and share insights, right? Help us build the right tool um, and and reach out, please. Very good. Well, I want to thank Amanda Lee. COO and co-founder of Banyan Infrastructure for coming on the show. I'm Tim Montague. Let's grow solar and storage. Take care. Hey, listeners. This is Tim. I want to give a shout out to all of you. I do this for you twice a week. Thank you for being here. Thank you for giving us your time. I really appreciate you and what you're all about Uh, You are part and parcel of the energy transition, whether you're an energy professional today or an aspiring energy professional. So thank you. I want to let you know that the Clean Power Hour has launched a listener survey, and it would mean so much to me if you would go to cleanpowerhour.com, click on the About Us link right there on the main navigation that takes you to the About page. And you'll see a big graphic, listener survey. Just click on that graphic and it takes just a couple of minutes. If you fill out the survey, I will send you a lovely baseball cap with our logo on it. The other thing I want our listeners to know is that this podcast is made possible by corporate sponsors. We have Chin Power Systems, the leading three-phase string inverter manufacturer in North America. So check out CPS America. But we are very actively looking for additional support to make this show work. And you see here our media kit with all the sponsor benefits and statistics about the show. You know, we're dropping two episodes a week. We have now over 320,000 downloads on YouTube. And we're getting about 45,000 downloads per month. So this is a great way to bring your brand to our listeners. And our listeners are decision makers in clean energy. This includes project executives, engineers, finance, project management, and many other professionals who are making decisions about and developing, designing, installing, and making possible clean energy projects. So check out cleanpowerhour.com both our listener survey on the About Us and our media kit and become a sponsor today.
Thank you so much. Let's grow solar and storage. The Clean Power Hour is brought to you by CPS America, the maker of North America's number one three-phase string inverter with over six gigawatts shipped in the U.S. The CPS America product lineup includes three-phase string inverters ranging from 25 to 275 kW. Their flagship inverter, the CPS 250-275, is designed to work with solar plants ranging from 2 megawatts to 2 gigawatts. The 250-275 pairs well with CPS America's exceptional data communication, controls, and energy storage solutions. Go to chintpowersystems.com to find out more.